finally, it's officially 2022, which means midterms are now in full swing, and the odds are not with the Democrats to maintain their majority on Capitol Hill, as GOP-led voter suppression ravages the country, and Republicans have stacked the deck in their favor by redrawing the maps in key states. Now, they only need to flip five seats to seize control of the House. Meanwhile, just one loss in the Senate would sink Democrats' razor-thin majority in the upper chamber. Joining me now, MSNBC political analyst Fernand Amandi and co-founder and senior advisor of the Collective PAC, Stephanie Brown James, my friend, making her cross-connection debut. And of course, Dr. Jason Johnson is still with us. Fernand, I want to uh, start off with you. Happy New Year. Uh, I have a question for you, but I uh, just want to first say Happy New Year to you, my friend. Well, Happy New Year to you, Tiffany. A little cheers to bring in the, uh, the New Year. I don't think it's cheers. too early here on Saturday morning. And yes. also to uh, everyone on the panel and watching at home. So Happy New Year. Thank you, Fernand. I appreciate that. Steph, I'm sorry. You're the only one without a, uh, a cocktail this morning. <laughs> we'll have to uh, Which is remedy shocking. that. Right. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> we'll have to remedy that. Um, Fernand, I have a, a question that is blowing my mind, my friend. How on earth is Herschel Walker running neck and neck with Raphael Warnock? Let's just revisit what we know about Mr. Walker. He has threatened the life uh, of his ex-wife. She came out and said that story. He has talked about um, having multiple personalities. Um, he is uh, inept when it comes to uh, holding any kind of office, when it comes to politics. His only thing that he has going for him is an uh, endorsement from Donald Trump. And sadly, that may work in some parts of uh, red pockets in Georgia. And Mitch McConnell is solely bought into this because he's endorsed him. Please tell me, Fernand, that there is a pathway to block this man from kicking Raphael Warnock out of the Senate. Well, I don't want to start 2022 in uh, doomsday mode, uh, Tiffany, but the truth of the matter is uh, it is a very difficult environment. And I think the answer to your question, how is Herschel Walker running neck and neck? could be answered with another question. How did Donald Trump get elected president? How is Marjorie Taylor Greene a member of Congress uh, with all of the scandals both of them had? And the truth of the matter is, what we've seen is there is now this autocratic Republican Party where facts don't matter, uh, biography doesn't matter, and what used to be disqualifiable behavior is no longer disqualifiable of anything. For some of them, it is a, a, a mandate. It's part of why they want to support these folks. But as I said, Right now, these states and all of these races that are going to take place across the country and where the majority is at hand for the Democrats is tied directly to the performance of President Biden at the national level. All of these races have been nationalized. And the reason I think it's close in Georgia and it's close in some of these other states, even Arizona, is because President Biden's approval rating now is sunk to some of the lowest points it's been at his presidency. Unless he can rise that approval rating and start to show and convince the American people of the really strong work that the Biden administration has done, transformational work in this past year, uh, it's going to be very difficult to hold the Congress. And that presents a very difficult situation for democracy. Stephanie, one of the most important things that anybody's got to remember, in addition to polls in 2022, is cash rules everything around me. Collective PAC is good, sort of funding money, collecting money. How are Democrats looking in sort of the fundraising that they're going to need to be successful in 2022? How is Warnock doing in raising money? How is, is uh, Val Demings doing? Like, how are people doing when it comes to raising money to fight off what's going to be a massive GOP onslaught, both on television and online? Uh, well, I can tell you, Jason, I love the picture of the map because it shows that uh, there's a lot of strength that Democrats still have to win a number of these Senate seats. And in four of those states, specifically, we have black candidates who are not only polling well, who are campaigning well, but they are raising money. If you look at Raphael Warnock, the last time that he reported his numbers, he was way ahead when it came to his fundraising numbers from before. Uh, you look at Wisconsin, you have Mandela Barnes, you have Val Demings in Florida, you have Sherry Beasley in North Carolina, who are all extremely um, uh, qualified and ready candidates, but they are raising the money. And I think that's a testament to their talking about the issues. I agree with, you know, Fernando, it is difficult when you have the Biden administration struggling in so many parts of the country and how they're being able to relate and talk about their accomplishments. And while these are nationalized races, these are candidates who are hitting the ground. They are going door to door already. They are on the, 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 the news. They are making sure that they are talking to voters directly about what's happening in their states. And that's what's going to make the difference that these folks on the ground know what these candidates want to do for their specific states and how they're going to represent the U.S. Senate.
Yeah, and no, you know, what's at stake if, if Democrats lose uh, control of, of Congress? And, you know, Stephanie, I just want to point out the work that you and your husband, Quentin, do at Collective PAC is crucially important because the donor class is largely white and male. Um, and it determines who's, you know, uh, considered uh, viable um, candidates in this landscape. And as you know, there are no black women in the Senate currently, which brings me to you, Fernand. You're in Florida, my friend. Tell me that Congresswoman Val Demings will become Senator Val Demings, especially <laughs> given all the things happening. Uh, in Florida right now, what are her chances looking like? Well, Tiffany, I never lie to you or, or the viewers. And as much as I would personally like to see her defeat, who I think is the least respected and maybe one of the worst members in the Senate, and Marco Rubio, uh, right now, again, she's going to have a difficult time because Florida is now the state that you might call MAGA state. This is the front mm. lines for the Trump movement with Ron DeSantis here. It's a state that the Republicans control completely. Now, the good news for Democrats in Florida is, without a question of a doubt, Val Demings is the best possible candidate that Democrats could have ever run against Marco Rubio. She's an extraordinarily talented, charismatic, and accomplished uh, congresswoman. She was also a former police chief in Orlando, so her credentials are, are sterling. But again, if the Democratic Party is going to try and, and defeat uh, Marco Rubio in Florida, they need to do a lot better job engaging. There is some concern that national Democrats have abandoned Florida and they're looking at other states, states perhaps like Virginia, to, to, to keep the control of the Congress. We need to see, I think, a greater sense of an investment here if Val Demings is going to be helped to push over the top. But is she the best candidate the Democrats could have put up? No question. Wow. So, Stephanie, you're in Ohio, a state that, again, some Democrats have now said has been abandoned. They say it's red. It used to be sort of purple one way or another. You're having a sit down with Joe Biden, theoretically, what are the two things that you think he needs to make sure he has accomplished by June of 2022 in order to raise his numbers so that he is not sort of an a, a, a albatross on the neck of, Repu of Democrats who are going to be running this fall? Well, I think there's two things. One is in the, the political realm, and, and I think it's really important. We have um, to do some, some work when it comes to voting rights. We need to pass this bill. We need to do some work when it comes to criminal justice reform. I know that these are ideas that Congress does not seem to want to move on. Joe Biden needs to do all that he can to make sure that we get some forward movement and that Specifically, people of color, black people, young people feel as though this administration is listening to their cries of we need to have progress on these seminal issues. But I would also say when it comes to the campaign trail and these candidates, look, you mentioned Val Demings. She has to raise at least a hundred million dollars just to be successful in this race. That is a whole lot of money that none of us have sitting around. And so we need to make sure that Joe Biden, as well as all these Democratic strategists and all these Democratic donors understand these candidates need money early and often. Yeah. We can talk about the issues all day, but if candidates can't connect to the voters, then what's the point? Absolutely. Well, Stephanie, you'll definitely have to come back. Uh, Fernand Amandi, you'll join us a little later. But thank you so much, Steph, for spending your New Year's Day with us. Please give my love to your husband and those two gorgeous boys. And we will see you very soon. Thank you. And coming up next, a new year means a new phase in the fight to hold the January 6th ringleaders accountable. We'll talk about that after the break.